Hey guys, what's going on? White Fox 1225 here, and today we are going to be doing another Elder Scrolls Online Saturday. So, again, in case you guys forgot, this is going to be a bi weekly show now, just because Elder Scrolls Online is already out. And I'm going to be working towards doing more Elder Scrolls videos during the week as well as other videos. Uh, we got some new games coming out pretty soon, like Wolfenstein and Watch Dogs, which are pretty exciting. Uh, so, I'll probably be covering those too, but Elder Scrolls Online is still going to be the center focus of my channel. Uh, yeah, but anyways, uh, moving on with the actual episode, we actually have some pretty big news this week. Uh, so basically, let's just go into the agenda. First, we're going to be covering the Road Ahead article, but mostly focusing on uh, the future update section and talking about all the things that are supposed to be coming out the rest of this year. Uh, we're going to be talking about new news that the consoles have been delayed six months, which definitely is a hard hit for some people. Uh, and then we're going to be talking about the reviews of ESO and why some of them are so negative and others are positive and things like that. So let's just jump in and go into the road ahead. So the first thing I want to say is anyone who played the game before 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time uh, on Thursday, May 1st, is inclined to five days of free game time. It really doesn't do much because you're still paying monthly, but it does kind of extend it five days, which is, I guess is some nice compensation. Personally, I think I would have maybe rather like some new free items or something, but whatever, it still works. Um, so basically they did that just because there's been so many bugs with the game. Uh, but the first thing they talked about is basically what they're really working on now besides future updates. Uh, they really want to reduce gold farming, uh, which is a big problem. I'm sure you guys get a lot of messages about like uh, gold farming and also like black market trading and stuff like that. Uh, they want to stop the bot problem that uh, a lot of dungeons have, and I think they actually have pretty successfully because I've noticed a huge decrease in that. Uh, they, of course, they're working to fix the bugs. Uh, a lot of the major bugs have been taken away, but there are definitely still bugs in the game, and they're trying to address and fix those. Um, and then they went on to address some of the negative reviews. They said, uh, you know, they're listening to all the reviews. They're trying to fix the things that they think they need to be worked on and that people pointed out to them. Uh, and they said, obviously, they don't uh, like agree with the negative reviews, but they definitely, you know, respect the input and definitely are trying to improve and get better. Um, they also are trying to listen to the people who are in game and get their opinions, not just, you know, IGN and GameSpot. But we'll talk more about the reviews later. For now, I really want to get into the future updates uh, and talk about, you know, the huge uh, list of new stuff we're going to get. Some of it sounds really cool. and then uh, So I'll go through the list, and then with each one I'll tell you what I think, kind of some new stuff I'd like to see. And, you know, just some stuff like that. So let's get started. So obviously, just first, before I say anything else, we will be do having Craglorn pretty soon. I would guess in the next two weeks at least. Um, so yeah, Craglorn is coming. So I'm not going to go through that because we already know all about that. And if you haven't, make sure you check out my Elder Scrolls Online Saturday video just focusing on Craglorn. But anyway, the first thing that they want to add is a system that allows group players to see each other even when they're in different phases. So sometimes when you're questing with some friends doing the same quest, you'll notice maybe if you make different decisions or you're in different phases, uh, you know, that player will be invisible and, you know, uh, you won't be able to see them at all. And they're working for a system that allows group players to see each other even when that happens. And that's nice. I haven't run into that many problems with that, but it definitely kind of does happen sometimes. So you know what? Uh, it's just great that they're working on it. That's not a you know a huge one, but it's just something uh, that's definitely gonna improve the game. So next we have what I am so excited for, what I'm most excited for, which is a justice system. I always call it a crime system, whatever you want to call it. Same thing. Uh, anyway, so this is gonna be if you're stealing from a, a NPC or you're killing an NPC, uh, you're gonna have to deal with the consequences if you're caught. And this is so exciting. This is gonna add so many new systems to the game. First off, the saying steal from an NPC, I'm thinking maybe pickpocketing. I'm not sure. Uh, that would be so exciting because I loved pickpocketing in Skyrim. It was one of my favorite parts of the game, actually. Uh, and also killing NPCs. Right now, there aren't so many NPCs we can kill. So it also might mean that we can kill you know, more NPCs now, which I would be extremely excited for. Uh, cause I, I know it sounds kind of weird, but I've always uh, you know, liked be at least having the ability to kill someone in Skyrim if I wanted to was really nice. So I'm super excited uh, about the justice system coming. And I just really can't wait. I really hope this is the next one after Craglorn. I feel like it would bring a lot of new life into the game. Maybe I'm not, but I, that's just what I think. But I really would want to see the justice system soon, and I'm super excited for it. Next, we have the migration of the European mega server to the U European data center. That's really not an update. What they're saying is basically they're just going to bring the mega server actually over to Europe. Uh, so, you know, I don't think that'll affect the gameplay at all. Uh, I mean, in terms of lags, I think 
uh, the European Mega Store has been fine, but anyway, that that's what they're doing. That's cool. Uh, it doesn't affect me even because I play on the North American server, but that's just something they're going to be doing. Uh, they want to have an FOV slider, a field of view slider, so you can adjust your field of view, uh, especially when you're using bows. The field of view can seem really too small, uh, so I'd be excited to widen that up. I actually would love them for them to have an update where they just make the field of view wider, even if they're not adjustable, just because I feel like it's, it's a little too small right now. Uh, I know on the shot cast they said it's sometimes you feel like a T-Rex with your bow. Uh, but yeah, so I would love to be able to increase that, and that's definitely cool. So something I'm really excited for right now is armor dyeing and tinting, which is the next item on our list. Uh, so right now you can you can't really change the color of your armor. You can change the way your armor looks by improving it. Uh, once you uh, get to I think superior it changes, and then once you get to legendary it changes again. Uh, sometimes the color changes, but there's definitely no custom way to set dyes like there was in Guild Wars 2. So an armor dyeing and tinting system would definitely be very. Um, uh, embraced by the community. I think that would be really cool. And it would allow you to customize your armor way more than you can right now and just make it completely your own and I would love to see that so much. So next we have two new veteran dungeons and they're going to be the Crypts of or the Crypt of Hearts and the City of Ash. So no more information on that, but uh you know, new dungeons always accepted. I love the dungeons in ESO and that's just going to add more end game content for those uh people who have reached veteran rank uh veteran rank content. Uh, so yeah, more in-game always good, so that is a really good update to add. Next, they want to add a new region of Craglorn uh, with a new trial called the Serpent. Uh, so I don't know how the trials work, or I don't know like what the name has to do with them or anything. I do, We do know how the trials work. Uh, but yeah, so a new region to Craglorn, I would almost rather them add a new zone. I guess we'll probably get those in the future. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this would just be a smaller update, not like a whole new update like Craglorn is. Just, you know, part of the next update or something like that. Uh, an increased ability to pick up items around the world. I'm super excited for this. You know, the world I've always talked about feeling kind of cardboard. So being able to pick up, you know, individual, t uh, you know, tomatoes or individual like knives on tables, it would really help you feel like you're more in the world, not just kind of like, like walking around, you know, viewing it from a screen. You know, when you can actually interact with any item, pick it up, move it around, that makes you feel like so much more part of the world. So. Definitely something that would make this feel more like an Elder Scrolls game and really just improve the MMO a lot, so I'm definitely excited for that. And I know it's a, a lot, something a lot of people want, especially the guys over at Shot at Cast. Next, we have another thing that I'm super excited for that I thought should have been the game, which is the Thieves Guild and the Dark Brotherhood storyline and quests. Definitely excited. My guess is they'll be released separately, but that's just, uh, you know, screw the Mages Guild and the Thieves Guild, or sorry, screw the Mages Guild and the Fighters Guild. You know, these are the two guilds people love. I love these two guilds, and I really just want to just play both of them. And then, of course, they'll probably have their own skill lines, you know, so I'm just super excited to get to these two, uh, you know, new guilds, and it's just going to be so exciting. Of course, the Thieves Guild and the Dark Brotherhood will probably be released with a new crime system or justice system, maybe even after, or maybe all in the same update. You know, if that was the next update, I would just be so happy and just so excited. So really hope that it's coming up soon. Next, we have spell crafting. So this just kind of hit me right in the face when I saw it. You know, spellcrafting is something you saw in Oblivion, didn't even see in Skyrim. So, in an MMO, how do you make your own spells? How do you make your own abilities? Uh, my guess is it would be like, uh, you know, a whole new skill line probably, where you can kind of like create your own spells, and then like they take up a hotbar space, you know, no, in like you kind of create your own, so it would be like, you know, you fire this at someone, it does this amount of damage and this amount of other damage. I'm not completely sure how it's going to work, but definitely awesome, you know. Giving the a player ability to, you know, make their own, you know, ab ability on the hotbar is just something we haven't seen in an MMO. You know, being able to make your own ability, make your own spells, that's something from the Elder Scrolls, not something f that would be in an MMO. So having this in the game would be a huge, huge, huge addition and something I would really love to see. So I really hope that's coming soon. Next we have horse racing. I am really excited for this because I think it would just be really fun. Nice little side activity, you know, like fishing. Just more things to do around the world to take a break from leveling or whatever. Uh, so I would like to see that. One thing I worry about is people who have, you know, ranked up their horse just to, uh, you know, kind of be a mule, you know, carry stuff. Me, I've always focused on speed, just hay and apples, you know, more speed, more sprinting. So I really would love to see the horse racing. Maybe they'll have some obstacles that you have to jump over. Uh, maybe you can even just watch if you want. 
I think that would be a nice addition. But yeah, horse racing, definitely a cool addition. I think that would be really fun. Maybe even an ability to bet on races would be nice too. Next, we have the Drag Dragon Star Arena, which is similar to Trials, but built for a group of four. Uh, yeah, so that's good. And just, you know, more PvE is always good for those PvE years, because obviously we have a lot of PvP, but adding more PvE is always good. They want to add some improvements to fishing, so right now the fishing system is a little iffy. Nothing too special, but I know they want to make it better. They want to make, I don't know what they're going to do, maybe the ability to like pick up gear. I don't even know if that's in the game right now, if you can like pick up an item every once in a while. Uh, maybe make the fish more like uh, useful or something, I have no idea. But they do want to improve the system somehow. Next, crafting system improvements, no more details on that. They just want to improve it, which I love the crafting in the game, so making it better would just you know obviously be good improve looking for a group system so i haven't had a problem with this but i mean i haven't even heard of anyone who has but you know quicker grouping is always better we've gotten a, me and my guild whenever we're doing like a four-man dungeon with three people and we're looking for someone else it's almost an immediate thing so no problem the only thing is that sometimes you fake get this bug where it's like it tells you you're not the group leader when you are and you have to you know get rid of the group and then remake the group but they're all looking for that. My guess is that the group system that they're looking to improve is like a huge group system. Maybe like a group of like 20 if you want to do some PvP or something. Maybe they want to add the ability to find like 20 more people or something. I'm not sure, but uh, you know, that's maybe a, a way that they're looking to improve it. Next, they want to improve the uh, NPC facial animations, which some people have complained about, and I can see that. Uh, so yeah, improving that would be great. Next, they want to add a guild functionality update, which would be really cool. So they want to update the guild store interface, which is good. And then they want to add customizable guild insignias, which is, or insignias. Uh, they definitely an awesome update. I'm super excited for this because lots of lore behind my guild. We have really dedicated members. So being able to represent like our uh, Bearborn clan with like a bear on like our armor would be so sick. They also want to add like tabards and guild ranks. Well, they already have guild ranks, so I'm not sure what that means. Maybe just more. And a guild kiosk, which is a guild store that is open to everyone uh, and, and that are available to the highest bidding guild. So basically what I think it is is just a guild store that other guilds can shop at. And that would kind of help with the whole not having an, aux uh, an auction house. Uh, so just more ways to trade, which would help the economy, which is uh, always good. But I'm really excited to being able to you know, have customizable guild insignias on my armor and stuff like that. That would be really cool. Next, auto-leveling dungeons that level to your group leader. That would be really cool because then people of different levels could play it. Uh, that would be really nice and I'm excited for that. Next, awards when you repeat dungeons. So right now a lot of people are repeating dungeons just to get more XP because it is a great way to get XP. Uh, so maybe different awards if you do like a dungeon like 10 times or something like that. Uh, so that's pretty cool and that we're just rewards people who really want more and more XP and are kind of grinding away at that. So yeah, that's obviously welcomed. Uh, next we have an Imperial uh, City PvP dungeon, so PvP dungeon, I don't know if they mean just a dungeon in the PvP area or an actual dungeon that like, has some PvP in it, I think some a dungeon with some PvP in it would be really awesome, but you know, we'll have to see what they mean by that, and if they are adding the Imperial City, I would love to see them add the arena, uh, but again, uh, that's not listed, so we don't know. But hopefully they do decide to add that. Alright, so that pretty much does it for the Road Ahead article and all the future updates. So now I want to talk about the console. So the console um, release of Elder Scrolls Online has been delayed six months, which is some really rough news for some people. Uh, so this means basically it was supposed to be released in June. So it'll now probably be released in December or maybe even 2015, which is really rough. And you know what this reminds me a lot about? It reminds me of the launch of Elder Scrolls. Uh, online, just a regular release for PC and Mac, because if you remember, they were saying like summer or spring of tw 2013, you know, it got to be summer or spring of 2013, they're like, you know, yeah, we're just going to do it in 2014, uh, not even 2014, spring of 2014, so it got delayed even more than six months, so I definitely feel your pain console people, well, you know, it doesn't affect me personally, but I know some people who it will, some people in my guild were looking to play on console, so definitely uh, some tough news to take, and uh, I personally would always rather have a really good game a little late than, you know, a really bad game, you know, early. 
But, of course, it's just hard news, and I'm sure there's lots of people sad about this. One thing that does come out of this is the kind of way they're compensating people for it, is anyone who purchases and plays the PC Mac version of Elder Scrolls Online by the end of June, they'll have the opportunity to transfer their characters to uh, either console version when the uh, version of the game is released on console. So, uh, basically, you can just make your character now, play it on PC, and then may and then when uh, you know the console comes out, you can transfer that character to the console. So you could possibly see Red and Rank 10 or 12 people walking around on release day for console. So that definitely is an option, but I'm guessing the people who want Elder Scrolls Online uh, you know, for the console are doing that because they only have a console, unless they want to play their MMO on the console. The only thing is that if you do have the PC Mac game and you maybe hit re Veteran Rank 10 if you have nothing to do, you can start leveling up another character if you were planning on buying the console edition. So it is something kind of good that comes out of this. Um, and basically, uh, you buy the game now, and then by the end of June, and you can do this. And then when the game actually comes out for uh, Xbox One and PS4, you just have to pay $20 to get the game on that. Um, and you'll get the full digital version of ESO, uh, and you'll get one tr character transfer, uh, and then you'll also get 30 days of included game time. Oh, actually, no, not just one character transfer. You'll actually get, I think, however many you want, which is kind of cool. Uh, so, yeah. So you can transfer, I think, any character you've leveled over to the console, uh, and I'm pretty sure about that. So next, uh, I just want to talk about the reviews for Elder Scrolls Online, and kind of why they've been so negative. So if you guys have noticed, the more and more reviews have been coming out, they're more in the 7 range. When reviews were first coming out, I was looking at them, they were more in like the 9 to 8 range, but the more and more that come out, they're in like the 7 high 6s, mostly uh, mid 7s, but... Basically, I want to talk about why the reviews were so negative, and, you know, for me, I, Elder Scrolls Online is just such a great game. It's one of my favorite games of all time, so seeing people who aren't completely in love with it is a little weird for me. And, you know, the more and more I look at reviews, I think they're looking at it from an Elder Scrolls standpoint. They wanted this to be Elder Scrolls 6, and it just, it never was going to be. Elder Scrolls Online is the name, you know. If they wanted to make Elder Scrolls on, uh, Online 6, but with, like, a social feature, they would have done that. But, no, this is Elder Scrolls Online, and, you know, it's supposed to combine Elder Scrolls and an MMO. And it does that fairly well. No doubt it's more MMO than Elder Scrolls, at least, you know, more on, like, uh, gameplay-wise. But all the lore... All the characters. There are lots of aspects of the Elder Scrolls there with the whole world. Uh, so if you are a fan of the Elder Scrolls world, you're gonna like this if you like MMOs too. And I think you can't really review this game like it's an Elder Scrolls game, because of course it's not gonna stack up to Skyrim, because it wasn't meant just to be an Elder Scrolls game. You have to look at it as just a game. Pretend you don't even know the name of this game and you're going in. What would you give it? And I think lots of people would give it higher scores if it wasn't named the Elder Scrolls Online, which is so stupid. Um, even on the shoddy cast, and I love these guys, they were saying, you know, as they're reviewing it, they reviewed it as an Elder Scrolls game, as an MMO, they gave it like a 6 for uh, an Elder Scrolls game and an 8 for an MMO, so they made it a 7. So I just, I don't think that's fair, I think it should just be reviewed as a game, you know, forget the name of the game, it does have Elder Scrolls aspects, it does have MMO aspects, but just forget all that for a second, and just play the game and review it, and that's kind of where I'm coming from, and that's how I'm going to review the game when I actually get to review it in, like, next week. So, that's just kind of my little rant about ESO reviews, and I think the biggest problem is just the love of Elder Scrolls game, and the hope that this was going to be the next Elder Scrolls game, and it is to an extent, but it's not... The, you know, the traditional Elder Scrolls experience. But that pretty much does it for this uh, little rant on why the reviews are so negative. And I will have my review up probably next week or in two weeks once I hit level 50. I might even try to do some of the veteran rank content before I review it. So that pretty much does it for this video. Uh, I hope you guys did enjoy it. And one thing I just wanted to add is that I am going to be doing another Elder Scrolls Online time card giveaway. Uh, you know, 60 days of free game time for you. Uh, once I hit 400 subscribers, so I'll probably be making a review f uh, video for that in the future. But also, I want to mention that my guild is still looking for new members. We are the Bearborn Clan. Uh, we do a lot of PvP, a lot of PvE, and even some RP. So if you're interested, just you know, uh, look at the link in the description. Also, a link to my video on the Crag Lauren uh, update. So. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't subscribed already and you like the content, make sure you do that. If you like the video, give it a like, and I will see you in the next one, guys. Uh, thanks.